تعلمون اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there's going to be a treaty between you and the sons of the yellow people the bani al-asfar in arabic is you, you could probably say the sons of the blonde and in arabic it's not the romans and what did i tell you who the romans are united states in europe there's going to be a treaty look at this between you and these bani al-asfar united states europe peace you're going to have peace with them to the point you and them go out to fight a third enemy prophecy if portions of this didn't happen what i'm telling you you're going to see if allah gives you a long life inshallah you're going to see it happen inshallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi said you fight a third enemy a third common enemy and he said it's going to be by damascus and palestine between the area of damascus he specified the area specified the area even he specified and described the area as a huge green land near the area of syria damascus and when you're done you the muslims and you're just like what we're doing i mean look at all the countries today they're all under peace treaties all the arabic and muslim countries are under peace treaties with the united states it's not begging them so the prophet sallallahu alaihi said you're going to fight together a third enemy who is the third enemy allahu alam we don't know who it is could be china russia persia doesn't matter allahu alam we don't know who it is when you're victorious over that third common enemy someone in that gray big valley that's green valley after the rest and after the battlefield raises the cross and says by this cross we won so one of the muslims gets up and there's two narrations of the hadith one says he pushes him he gets so jealous how could you say it's the cross we want it's allah that made us win so he goes up and pushes him that's one hadith in another hadith he gets up and kills him prophecies that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophesied and became true in our time that concern our political situation that we're going through today so there over there the romans united states and great britain and the muslims together and this is going to be a severe battle it's not a small battle it's going to be a severe battle that destroys technology because every single battle after this one and i think writers call this hormuzdon or something similar to that word writers call it that even in non-muslim books this is going to be the battle to kill technology because every battle after this battle that the prophet prophesies about they use the sword there's no mention about technology it's not worded vaguely to the point where you could assume it's technology or you know the sword in the arrow it's only sword after this battle someone will say how how are you talking like this we live our lives on the computer you know Allah was in a matter of moments could destroy all that not not with something huge with something small you know something small happens corporations in their entirety go down because the computers went down Allah is able to do that and worse than that look what he did with Ad what did he do with Ad فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ when you stick with Islam when you're true Muslim don't look at how much power anyone has stay steadfast with Allah and go on your way فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ عَاد we destroyed them with wind they were giants Allah destroyed them with a little wind and the verses go on to say سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا eight days seven nights حُسُومًا after each other and then Allah says فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةٍ you see any remains of them these giants who control the earth Allah says فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةٍ you see any remains of them no matter how giant you are no matter how much technology you have how much power you have 
stay steadfast with Allah, Allah, it's not going to remain in your face. That's why I tell you, technology, something small could happen. All oh, these computers are gone. You remember in the 2000s, that chip that they needed to change, uh, nearly everyone was destroyed and depressed. Oh, the, the 2000s coming up, the computers are not going to work, the credit cards pull your money out of the bank. And it's a small, stupid little thing. When Allah wants to get involved and give victory to His messengers, it's going to be like, ah, small little thing, destroy everything. So they're there. And they, 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 they kill or push the man who's carrying a cross. And they depart. The Christians depart and the Muslims depart. And at that time, the Prophet wasallam said, nine months come. The Prophet said, nine months come, the time period of a woman when she gets pregnant. Nine months. He said both. Nine months and the time frame a woman gets pregnant. What happens in these nine months? The Romans in the Europe, the Kuffar, and they're going to be Christian. This is not a Jewish battle. Absolutely 100% Christian. Bani al Aswar got to be Christian. So they go and prepare a retaliation against the Muslim in nine months. The Muslims go to nothing. There's a Khalifa at that time in the Arabian Peninsula. There's a Khalifa in the Arabian Peninsula. And really, it doesn't have to be. What you think is a Khalifa, I mean, the Khalifa we think, it could be that people supposedly claim. I mean, no one with his right mind thinks King Fahd would be a Khalifa. He's lower than being a bum, as we all know. But some people, some ignorant heads, think he's a Khalifa. So he's, a, he's supposedly a Khalifa to some people. This could be the application of the Hadith, that they think he's the Khalifa. Some people think that person is the Khalifa. So that's enough to satisfy the Hadith. That Khalifa dies, and there's a battle over who's going to take leadership afterwards. There's, that Khalifa is going to die, there's going to be a battle who takes leadership afterwards. The Romans are busy preparing an attack. The Muslims, Khalifa dies. They need a leader to lead them, and they're fighting. And you know what happens at that time? That's when a man named Muhammad ibn Abdullah comes out. This is the Mahdi. This is the Mahdi. He was not born yet. The Mahdi we believe in is not born yet. He's going to be born at the end of time when he's a young man. He's going to come out from Medina to Mecca. In the city, it's all in this nine months. you got the Romans, the Kuffar, the United States or Europe preparing to attack the Muslims to revenge the cross. you got the Muslims feuding over who the Khalifa is. And you got this man over there who's heading from Medina to Mecca to take commitment, the Prophet ﷺ said exactly where he's going to take the commitment, بين الرقن والمقام area next to the Kaaba, Maqam Ibrahim, and the corner next to Maqam Ibrahim, he's going to be there in the middle, all the Muslims are going to give him the commitment. What's his name? The Prophet said his name is like my name. His father's name is like my father's name. His mother is there. His great-great-grandmother is Fatima. Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They give him commitment. How do you know this is the right man? When Allah told us about Isa, He told us he's going to come down at the end of time with his hands and two wings of angels and he's going to come down. No one, as soon as they see him with his hands and two angels and two angels' wings is going to ever dispute that to Isa alayhi wa sallam. There's a jazz, kafir, between his eyes, kafir. Everyone's going to read it. Even the illiterate Prophet وسلم, said, Kaf Alif Ba Ra, Kafir. How do you know this is a Mahdi? You don't know it for sure until people start giving him commitment, and there are very few who give him commitment. Very few give him commitment. An army comes from behind Medina to attack him. When the army passes, Medina and gets to it. This is all in hadith. This is not a fiction story. This is all an authentic hadith. When the Prophet said, when they reach the Jahfa, a town, known, it's known. I been to it. When he reaches the Jahfa, then Allah is going to open the earth in the middle portion of the army and sink the army in. They're coming to kill the Mahdi. And the front of the army is going to shout back. Oh, this is a hadith. The front of the army is going to ask the back of the army, are you okay? By the time the answer comes back, the earthquake opens and swallows them all in. This, this is the only 100% sign that man over there in Mecca is the Mahdi. What does the Mahdi do? 
He goes, there's an attack on the Muslim. The first attack that comes to him is by air from Bani Kel. Realize, dear brothers and sisters, that we're living in these times. That all of Asham is fighting. You find that many of the ahadith specifically tell you of what's going to happen. You find some of the weak ahadith. They're not sahih, but they're weak ahadith that say someone from Bani Kalb, someone from Bani Kalb is going to oppress the Muslims. He's going to fight against the Muslims and he will be ferocious in oppressing them. Who knows what tribe Bashar al-Assad belongs to? What tribe does he belong to? We don't know. We're asleep. He belongs to Bani Kalb. Why do we think that we're not living in these times? It's our own ignorance that makes us unaware of these things. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the black banner will be raised. Is it befitting, therefore, that we hide behind any other banner? That we fly the flag of Palestine hand in hand with the socialists and the communists, thinking that they're going to grant us victory? Allah will grant us victory. March behind the banner of Tawheed. March behind the banner of the true Mujahideen of the Ummah. Grant them your support and make dua for them. For they will be the ones who will grant victory to this Ummah. Dear brothers and sisters, wake up and look around us. The tribe of that person who's attacking them is Bani Kem. He demolishes them. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu said, everyone who doesn't fight with the Mahdi at that time, Regret he didn't fight because there's so much wealth, so much pleasure in the victory that happens, everyone regrets it. The second one, he has a battle in Iran, Persia, and he defeats them. The third one is the one I want to talk about. Those people planning for nine months come to him. And this is when the Muslims hold success. Three portions of the army. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when they see their enemy, you know how much their enemy is? The Prophet told us exactly how much they are. Eighty portions of the army, eighty divisions of the army. With every division of the army is twelve. Is twelve thousand soldiers. Eighty by twelve thousand. Nearly over. An army of over. This didn't happen yet. This is happening. It's going to happen probably soon, probably in your lifetime. When the Muslims fight them, one third run away. The cowards, the hypocrites, the ones who don't have Iman and faith, one third run away. One third die, martyrs. The Prophet ﷺ said, these are the best martyrs ever. Best martyrs. And one third lead on the victory. Then he goes on to other, uh, the next one is Constantinia. They go and con conquer Constantinople and uh, they conquer Constantinople not by bloodshed, but by La ilaha illallah, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. They advance, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. They advance, Subhanallah, and that's how they conquer Constantinople. The enemy ran away. Probably these uh, people who live in Turkey today, the enemies of Islam there today, the leadership over there today. And when they flee and the Muslims start taking what they left behind them, the news comes that the Jal has come around. The Messiah has come around as well. And it's a lie. The one about the Messiah is not right. However, as soon as they turn back and go to Palestine, the Messiah is really there. The first one was a rumor, it was a lie. However, when they get to Palestine, to Beit al-Maqdis, to go and greet the Messiah, Isa alayhi salam, they find that he's really there. The first one was a rumor, but when they got there, it was a reality. That's a whole new different topic. Maybe we'll touch on it from Iran in the future. ثم صلوا على خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين فقد أمركم الله بالصلاة والسلام عليه فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله عليه بعشرة اللهم صل وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء الأئمة الحنفاء أبي بكر الصديق وعمر الفاروق وذن نورين عثمان وأب السبطين علي وعن آل بيت نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين وعن أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعن الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وعفوك وأحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين 
ودمر عداء الدين واهلك الزنادقه والملحدين اللهم ارفع علم الجهاد وانصر المجاهدين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم طاهر فلسطين من الرجس الحاقدين اللهم عليك بمن اذى اخواننا في العراق اللهم فرج عنهم اللهم فرج عنهم اللهم من ارادهم بسوء فحصهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تبقي منهم احدا ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاه